wanted to talk to you about this film. I enjoyed it because I knew nothing about it. And I think this is the, the fun thing about a video game, for instance, you wouldn't expect all that backstory to come with it. Was it the same sensation for you or you're a video game user? I know the world was totally new to me when I met um, the guys from Ubisoft. I, I was totally ignorant. And um, I was just uh, immediately intrigued by the concept of genetic memory, that sort of concept at the core of all of this I thought to be a very plausible one the fact that within our DNA we carry the memory and experience and knowledge of our ancestors and it's given to us as a sort of survival tool uh, for me that seemed really plausible and then the concept of Templars and assassins and this sort of battle between these two ideologies for the future of humanity I thought well that's gonna make for interesting viewing on a cinema screen. I didn't know, you know, in terms of a game how it, how it operated, but I knew that it would work well in terms of a filmic experience. And also the opportunity to, to travel and revisit different um, events in time and history and sort of play with perhaps our familiarity of what actually happened then. Yeah, absolutely, because at face value, it's a video game adaptation, but actually, you know, you just discover several things, like you said, different locations, different themes. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess uh, what's interesting about genetic memory is that it kind of gives a more plausible uh, explanation to what we think reincarnation could be, right? I mean, it's just quite spiritual as a concept. Mm. I mean, you could say, you know, things like deja vu. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, uh, perhaps a sixth sense or, you know, a gut feeling or an instinct mm. that these actually are um, memories within our DNA. I love that concept. And, um, and like I say, I felt like it, it, it's a very plausible one. Your character is new to the story, correct? Yes. He's not featured in, in the video game. Does that give you an opportunity to just imagine all sorts of backstories to collaborate in your mind and imagination onto what you think he went through? Yeah, whenever uh, you know I'm developing a character from scratch, it's fictional, um, I, I tend to do a sort of biography just to sort of round it off in my head and get a, uh, you know, um, uh, a complete feel of the character. It was very important for us that we wanted to do original characters from the game mm -hmm. on this sort of you know, origin story and also to pick our own timeline, the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, we'll see what happens if we make more films, you know, how much we cross-pollinate uh, with, the, with the characters that exist from the game. But what's interesting with this is already with the Animus, we didn't want to have Callum Lynch in a sort of inert experience in the present day. We wanted him to be physically involved with Aguilar, mm -hmm. well, what he was doing in, in sort of 1492 Spain. So we developed this sort of concept of the Animus arm, which I think is really successful. And the guys at Ubisoft are so happy with it, they say they're might introduce it in future games, so that's fun. Exactly, that's yeah. an example of the film inspiring the video game, that's not the right. other way around. Yeah, did yeah. you play the game? I did once mm. I came on board. Um, you know, uh, out of respect to Ubisoft, um, mm. but also to, to get an idea of the movement. Um, parkour elements are obviously very important in this universe. Uh, and also to, to understand, you know, the, the kill poses, strike poses, things like that, but f physicality mainly. Absolutely, and physicality is quite important to the character himself. I mean, mm -hmm. what kind of training are we talking about? I was thinking also a lot of Pilates because of posture, but probably not. You know, I probably should have done more. It's a fantastic yeah. exercise, Pilates and yoga. Um, but this was, uh, I, it was mainly yes, strength conditioning. So a lot of sort of supersets um, mixed with a bit of boxing. And then I would work with the stunt team uh, mm -hmm. and sort of work on the fight choreography and then do elements of parkour as well. So it meant getting up a little earlier in the morning and, uh, <laughs> and yeah, just sort of keeping um, a general sort of fitness and strength to sort of get, get me through the four months. This is usually part of the acting exercise anyway. When you're getting physically ready for a role, it's, it's a form of acting it, isn't it? It's always, it's always something that I work with immediately when I get a character mm. to try and figure out the physicality of the character. If I'm playing somebody who sits um, at a desk all day, that's mm. going to sort of affect the, the physicality of that character or somebody who works on a farm. Um, so I always like if you can tell a story visually um, without dialogue and then you sort of obviously add the dialogue, but, uh, but it's great when you, can, when you get the opportunity to tell a story visually. 
How much do you enjoy repeat collaborations? Obviously with Marion and Justin, but also with Brandon in this one, uh, the back-to-backs. Uh, is it fun for you to find this kind of comfort zone that allows you to go different ways creatively with the same actors? It just helps, you know, if you, if you find that you work with people well and you're on the same wavelength mm. and you can move quickly together and uh, you have a trust in one another, it absolutely helps. And that's why we were halfway through filming Macbeth when I approached Justin and, and asked him if he had any interest in this world and he came on board and then we approached Marion so I knew that we had something special with that with, with the team that was in place. Also Adam Arkapo who's um, the DOP in this uh, film and also did Macbeth, he's an artist in his own right so I knew that with, with his addition we were, we were also sitting in a very strong place visually. And, and you're talking as a producer for this one as well. Mm. Uh, is, is that something you are more and more interested in? Uh, you know, uh, making your movies from different points of views and uh, involvement? Absolutely. I, you know, I've always wanted to be involved in storytelling and um, more than just an actor and, mm. to have, uh, and to have that input for sure. It is quite rare to have a career as eclectic as yours where you've, you've explored so many roles that are complete stretches one from the other was it the intention from the beginning or you feel fortunate that this is the kind of things that you kind of attracted with your talent it was something that i i was it was very much a decision um to, to sort of try and play as much different um, personalities as possible and to really learn as much as i can and 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 to also sort of stretch uh, my sort of parameters as much as I, I, I could or can. Um, I don't want to sort of find myself in a comfort zone, you know, doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there is a, a level where people sort of, uh, one's personality and um, talent is restricted by certain things, but I wanted to see how far I could push it. Are things more enjoyable for certain types of films, more enjoyable for you to make, or you reboot yourself and it's a fresh uh, adventure every time? Each thing's got its own challenge. You know, mm. this, we, obviously, you know, when we shot Macbeth, for, as an example, with the yeah. you know, same team, we shot it in six weeks, you move very fast. There's um, not as much money or resources uh, at your disposal, but there's a freedom in that too. Mm. Um, there, comes, you know, there can be great uh, freedom in, in limitations because you know you don't have a lot of choices, so you have to make the most of what you've got. This is different because there's lots of avenues open and available. Uh, it's also very rewarding when you get a huge group of people like this, you know, maybe 400 people on set, and all of them have to come together and work well together. There's a huge challenge in that. And, uh, and you know, as, as, as a fan, I love to go see films like this where I can mm -hmm. actually just enjoy a ride or go something, see something that's perhaps a little more poignant. Um, so as a... As a player, I enjoy entering both of those worlds as well. Yeah, you're fortunate enough that you can enter any world you like. I don't think that. <laughs> Lucky. Romantic comedy next time. <laughs> uh, okay, yes, yes, for sure. It's time for some comedy. Yes, it, it's time for, for some lightness in, in your role. It's yeah. uh, just, you know, a, 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 a bit of a breathing break. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Although, although these, these have kind of uh, their, their own challenge as well. Not, yeah. not, not all... All actors enjoy making comedies, they, yeah. they're challenging too. Uh, are we talking about the same fan base in the type of Assassin's Creed video gamers than we do for the, you know, X-Men aficionados that are kind of quite intrusive? I don't find them intrusive. Mm. I find them passion, yes. passionate and I find them vocal and I enjoy that. It's like I, I, I consider myself the same. Mm. Um, whether they sort of cross over from one community to the other, I'm not sure. Um, it's a good question. Uh, so far, I've only really had um, interaction with the with the comic book community, and I, I love them, and I've sort of you know really experienced that in its full power at something like Comic Con. So uh, yeah, I, I, I welcome that that community because yeah. they they care. I love Comic Con. It's a, yeah. an amazing place to be because yeah. you just see people, you know. Well, it's actually the one festival that belongs to the fans. Yeah. You know, we're actually just guests there. You know, sort of we're coming into their world, so it's um. There's not a lot of festivals that have that, uh, you know, um, uh, as their sort of main thing. Usually the fans are kept on the outside, but this belongs to them. It's cool. Absolutely. And they're crazy and I love it. Uh, <laughs> I really love being there. Uh, we're, we're, we're coming up to award season. Uh, what do you remember most about being on the award cycle again last year? And, and what do you enjoy most about that crazy time? I guess being in and around and meeting my idols um it's you know so you get to meet your heroes and that, that's um 
that's a very exciting experience for sure and to share it with 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 family I'd say, so you, you oh you do travel with family in award season yes, yes. Th- they're the ones who have to probably have to wear heels and you don't have to worry about what you're gonna wear I, probably yeah <laughs> i haven't wore heels yet on the car but maybe i will in the future that's that's another suggestion <laughs> in the romantic comedy role that i uh, predict for you yeah. <laughs> what have been your favorite films this year um good question um let me think i just watched keanu the other night which i really mm. enjoyed it was quite an unusual uh, um cat <laughs> yeah but it was funny and it had darkness yeah. to it and um uh, yeah it was a re- re- real interesting mix that's that's that, that's a that's a good film and those heroes you were talking about that you met in award season who has inspired you infused in you all that uh, acting passion if you remember I yeah. also like Captain Fantastic yes and Captain somebody Fantastic. who inspires oh. me a lot is Viggo, Viggo Mortensen yeah I love him he's great I, I, it was a great privilege for me to be able to work with him and, uh, and, and get uh, to know him somewhat yeah, yeah. That's uh, the that, that film was quite exciting as well quite different from uh, from everything else so yeah. heroes only Viggo Mortensen isn't that good enough oh uh, he is he is <laughs>